So today I want to introduce a new mantra. Um, those of you who have practiced with me for a while, some of you have been practicing with me for years, probably have worked with this mantra before with me. It's one of my favorites. It's a beautiful mantra for getting us into the heart, into the spiritual heart. Last week we worked with the mantra, so hum, I am that, which connects us with the absolute. Aham prema is very similar. Aham prema, which means I am divine love. So it's another one of those I am mantras. But this one gets us right into the sense of the heart. I am divine love. And it gets us into what's known as the hridayam, or the spiritual heart, which is the heart that is bigger than, uh, deeper than the emotional heart or the physical heart, but the spiritual heart. And I'm going to put you all on mute at home so that we won't have any background noise. There we go. So what I'm going to do, is, what I'd like to do is get right in to practicing um, and connecting with this mantra, I am divine love, with a, with a, a chant. And as some of you may know, I know Susan knows, I've been struggling with a kind of a long-term chronic laryngitis. So whatever comes out, comes out. It may not be all that beautiful, but it will come from the heart. So also, especially first thing in the morning, <laughs> I've had to lower the key. Aham prema, I am divine love. I invite you to come into your yogic seat and invite the spine to get really long. And when we're singing about connecting with that spiritual heart, I invite you to begin by just opening your physical heart, letting the shoulders draw back and down, letting the chest spread just a little bit, just enough so that energetically you connect with that heart center. In the chakra system, that place in the center of the chest is known as the anahata, or heart chakra. Aham prema. First, just begin by taking a long, slow, deep breath in. And as you breathe in, allowing the breath to just envelop the heart, envelop that space. As if the universe were giving you an embrace through your breath. And exhale, release with a sigh anything that needs to be released, anything that you can offer out in the body, in the mind, or on the emotional level. Another deep breath into the heart. Embrace your heart center with your breath and exhale, let go. Breathing out anything that doesn't need to be here so you can just land here in this sense of, this place of sanctuary. Hey. 
palm over palm, right at the heart center. And take a moment just to breathe in and out of that space in the center of your chest. And notice if there's anything that shifts energetically for you as you do this, as you find that breath in and out of the heart center. your eyes open with a soft gaze, interlace your fingers, thumbs up. This is the, and with the elbows drawing out to the side, this is the mudra of unshakable trust. So when we place our hands there, we're practicing trust in the heart. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, thumbs down, press the palms away, chin to chest, roll back on the back end of your sit bones and squeeze out all the breath, spread behind the shoulder blades as you press the hands away. Inhale, palms to the sky, pinkies back behind you, press the lower lips fo ribs forward so you're getting a little arch in the back. Come forward on your sit bones to stretch and expand through the whole front of the torso, solar plexus area, belly. Exhale. We're taking basically seated cat-cow. As we press away, draw the navel in, chin to chest. Inhale, lift up, arch the other way, open the heart. Notice if your shoulders are going in shrug asana and see if you can unshrug them. Big breath in, exhale, press away. A few more of those at your own pace. Letting, taking some spinal rocking, rocking forward and back on your sitting bones, letting the spine find its expression in a back bend and in a forward bend. Deep, deep breaths in and out through the nose. Next time you inhale, lift up, lengthen, press the palms to the sky. Exhale, release the hands and interlace the fingers behind you. And if you need to take a strap between your hands so you can straighten your arms, you can do that. Lift the pinky side of the hands and reach the interlaced fingers to the back end of your space. Just take a moment to spread the heart, feel it radiate open wide in all directions, breathing in and out again of that place in the center of your chest. In and out with ujjayi breath through the nose. Letting the shoulder blades draw toward the center like they want to kiss one another. And exhale, release, feel all the energy in the arms. You might want to shake them out for a moment and feel all that warmth and tingling in the arms, and then circle the shoulders. <sighs> Anything you need to let roll off your shoulders, you can do that with an exhale. <sighs> Something that's pulling at your attention or kind of heavy on your to-do list today. <sighs> you can try rolling forward with the shoulders. <sighs> Any sounds or noises that want to come out. <sighs> 
And then once again, refresh your posture, lengthen up through the spine. Inhale, the arms rise. Reach through the right, reach through the left. And exhale, right arm underneath in eagle arms, your expression of eagle arms. Make sure the fingers point to the sky, thumbs point toward you, and find any exploration here, either circles or lifting and lowering. Just go for the place where you feel some juiciness in the upper back, upper arms, shoulders. Maybe that place behind the heart between the shoulder blades. Exhale, release, slowly unwind, and let your right arm rise. I'm mirroring you here, and take it into a side bend. Reach long and away. Take a breath right into those right fingertips. Get a little deeper into that side bend as you bend the left elbow, keeping both sitting bones rooted. And then exhale right into a twist facing right. Long, elegant twist as you lift up through the crown. Keep the chin level, lead with your heart, looking over your right shoulder. Inhale up to center, reach through the right, reach through the left, and eagle arms, left arm underneath. And once again, explore however you explored on the other side. For some people, this is a deep stretch. You can feel a lot of tightness. There's other people that do this, and, and it's just easy peasy, and they don't feel much of anything. So see what's true for you. For some people, it's more accessible just to give yourself a hug and walk your fingertips toward one another along the back body to get that spread between the shoulder blades. Just a little more exploration here. One thing you can do is draw wrists away and then elbows away, see what that offers. And then exhale, unwind and release. Let the left arm float to the sky, right palm roots down. Find length and space first along that left side of the body and then take it into a side bend. Notice if your upper arm, the elbow is bending and see if you can straighten it so you have an unbroken line of energy streaming out the tips of your fingers. Big breath in. And exhale into a twist to the left, dropping the shoulders down away from the ears, keeping the heart spread, looking over your left shoulder. Mm. Arms rise. And then palms come together down to the heart. And then once again, find that mudra of palm over palm. It's a little differently than the way we usually do it. But notice if energetically this mudra for you feels a little different than palms in prayer. These mudras have very subtle energetic effects on our uh, energy field, on our consciousness. So notice if this gesture of, kind of a gesture of self-love, see what that does for you. Take a few deep breaths in and out of the heart center for a moment. Ah, oh, okay. And then from here, uh, take your legs, stretch them out for a moment. And if you're sitting on a cushion, you can come off of that cushion. And we're going to take it into the windshield wiper twists. So legs are going to come as wide as your mat, or even wider if you've got long legs. And we're going to just let the knees, like windshield wipers, go side to side. And just like windshield wipers on a car, both come down at the same time. Have both knees touch at the same time. And you're gonna want to keep your feet nice and wide. They're gonna wanna creep together. So try to be mindful of keeping them as wide as your mat or even a little wider. And let the pelvis turn a little bit so that the hip pointer on one hip turns toward the opposite knee. So you're really getting a little low back twist. So see if you can exaggerate a little bit that uh, twist in the low back pelvis area. So we're opening up through the low back and through the hips and pelvis. You can also take a little cat-cow here. So you can arch back as the knees come to one side and drop the chin to the chest round the spine center, connecting with your breath. Inhaling, exhaling, 
Inhaling side, exhaling. You can sweep opposite arm across the body and twist around a little bit to get a little bit more of a side stretch here. And if you want to take it deeper, you can even come up into a half circle and take a big sweeping circle with that upper arm before taking it to the other side. Ah. Oh. And can take a couple more of those at your own pace, just letting it be an exploration of what helps open up through the side body and the hips, the whole spine. And then plant your feet again as wide as your mat. And let the knees come down to your right. And let the left knee draw over to the left a few inches. Left hand, I'm mirroring you here. Left hand sweeps all the way around, reaches back behind you. And then place both hands down under the shoulders to level the shoulders with the back of the mat. So I'm going to turn to face you so that, so that you can see. I know th those of you are facing away from me can't see, but you've got it. You know this. So shine that heart on the back wall. If it feels available to you, you can come down onto your forearms into a sphinx with uh, your upper arms parallel to one another. <sighs> Lengthen out through the crown of your head. Enjoy this twist. If you want to take it deeper and if it's available to your body, you can spread your arms apart a little into cactus arms or also known as goddess arms and lay your chest down on the mat if that feels available. It's not necessary, but it's another way to play. <sighs> One more breath in this twist. And then bring the hands under the shoulders, come back up onto um, straight arms and unwind. And as you unwind, once again, you're going to plant your feet on the edges of your mat. Let the windshield wipers come down to the other side. Now your right knee is going to draw a little over to the right. Right hand sweeps all the way around. Reach back behind you and plant the hands, fingers spread wide under the shoulders. Start with straight arms so that you can press into the hands to level your shoulders with the back of the mat. And shine that beam of light straight to the back of your space. Keep both knees down, the inside of one knee, the outside of the other knee, or the outside of that thigh. And then if it's available, come down onto your forearms into a, like a twisted up sphinx. Press into the elbows to shine that heart right down between the elbows. Lengthen out through the crown of the head. Breathe and enjoy. And if it feels good and available to lower down even a little bit more, see if that feels available or if that feels uncomfortable. It's, uh, it's just an optional way to play. Ah, and then coming back up onto straight arms, flat palms, unwind to come back to face forward. From here, we'll take it into cradle the baby. So take one leg, doesn't matter which one you start with. The other leg can just be softly bent or straight. But you want to stay long in the spine. So notice if you're going into a slump asana here and stay lifted from your root to the crown. Long line of energy through your spine. Your lower leg tries to come as close to parallel as you can. Rocking that baby. When you rock the baby, let it be from the hip, not the whole torso going side to side, but just Loosening up through the hip there. The head of the baby, your foot comes close to opposite shoulder. And as you draw it in, go for what feels juicy. There's a stretch in the glutes and an opening in the hip. You can take uh, inside of one el other elbow underneath, just above the ankle, and press away if you want a juicier stretch. Or bring both elbows underneath and draw that lower leg in a little closer. Breathe and enjoy. When you're ready to release on this side, just notice the difference between one leg and the other. Mm, and then we can take it on the other side. You've got a pair of twins here, and the other one wants to be held too. Ah. Oh. Keep connecting with the length in the spine. Crown of the head lifts without lifting the chin. So the back of the neck stays nice and long. 
Mm. You can rock your baby from the hip, massaging the hip joint. Hug that baby close in and maybe play with some explorations, whatever you did on the other side. Sending your breath to any place where you're noticing strong sensation, tightness or restriction. Now you're not trying to force anything to happen, you're just basically just dancing with your edge. A little bit beyond your comfort zone, but not to the point where there's pain. Back off a little bit from the edge on the inhale and meet the edge with a little bit more curiosity on the exhale. And then when you're ready to release, release here and bring the feet into uh, soles of the feet together. Legs make a diamond, you're centered on your sit bones, lifted in the spine, and you can butterfly the legs. You can open your feet like a book, so you can actually see the soles of the feet. That will allow the outside of the knees to come down toward the mat. And think of your spine like an arrow that goes from the root right through the crown of your head. So we don't wanna go into any rounding of the spine here. You wanna lead with the heart, let the shoulders draw down and back. Lift up on the inhale, exhale, come into seated wide leg forward bend or bound angle forward bend, seated baddha konasana. So inhaling to lengthen, so you back off a little bit, find that arrow-like quality energetically in the spine as it draws right out through the crown of the head. Exhale, lead with the heart, flat back. So the energy here, you wanna feel it in the hip crease, you're gonna feel it in the inner thighs, maybe in the outer thighs, maybe in the glutes and low back. If you start to round the spine, then that um, actually becomes more of a practice of spinal flexion rather than the lengthening and hip opening and low back stretch that we want. So take a few pulses here, lifting and lengthening, exhale to deepen. Doesn't matter how low you go, you just wanna go till you feel your edge. Place where the sensation is strong and you wanna go, oh yeah. <sighs> and then rising up out of this, let the legs slowly straighten and shake them out. Maybe give them a little pat down. Point and flex the feet. If you stay seated in Dandasana and you really vigorously point and flex the feet, you're not only activating and warming up the calf muscles, the ankles, the bottoms of the feet, but you might notice you're also giving your sit bones a little massage. Can you feel that? When you, uh, if you do this vigorously enough, you're massaging your butt as well. All right, you can circle the ankles open. Circle them the other way. And swing the legs around to come into table. I'm going to, for the folks at home, I'm gonna turn sideways. Sorry, I have my butt to you, Andy, but. <laughs> cat cow. Find your cat cow and explore it any way that feels good. For some of you, you might wanna come up onto fingertips or maybe curl your toes under or any other movements that feel good here on hands and knees. Maybe you wanna take a little bit of wagging the tail. Uh, just take a moment to unkink and explore some hands and knees as I take off a layer. I've already started to get a little warmer. Maybe you have too. Lots of breath. <sighs> and when you're ready, please press back into downward facing dog. <sighs> mm. 
Enjoying the lengthening down the backs of the legs, maybe one at a time, maybe both legs, if you can send both heels to the earth. Enjoy the lift in and up of the navel to invite length in the spine. Heart sinks down low. Press down and away with the hands. Ears line up with upper arms. Tilt the tailbone up and back. Low belly presses right toward the top of your thighs, the front of your thighs. And if it feels good, you can take it into plank on the inhale, nice firm plank, body, back body in one long line, exhaling, downward facing dog, Again, taking a flow there. And then take it into a connecting sequence, coming into plank, lower down knees, chest, chin. When you come down, you want to land so that the heart is right between the hands and the tips of the fingers are right, lined up with the tops of your shoulders. Elbows drawn in, butt up in the air, and then inhale it into your cobra. Maybe you want to start with baby cobra. Maybe you want to come into full cobra. Big breath in to open into your cobra, shoulders back and down, exhale, release, and press back into your downward facing dog. <clears throat> and let's do two more of that sequence at your own pace. With the breath, inhaling into plank, exhale, lowering down. I like to start with knees, chest, chin a few times before coming into chaturanga. Cobra, either low or high and down, downward facing dog. <sighs> Follow your own breath. You don't have to go at my pace. And next time you land in your downward facing dog, see if you can just take another moment to lift and lengthen, lift through the hips, lengthen through the spine, drop the heart down. And then we'll either walk or take a hop to bring the feet between the hands. So any way that you want to get there without any thud, to come into a forward bend, nice deep fold. Find your yes and no with your head. Let everything go, let the spine just pour out of the bowl of the pelvis, <sighs> any noises that want to come out. <sighs> your knees can stay bent if your hamstrings are tight, then you want to take a little bend in the knees to protect the hamstrings and the low back. If it's available to you to straighten the legs, you can do that. But if you're tight, certainly bend your knees. <sighs> uh, as much bend as you need to, especially for a first forward bend of the day. Take a half lift, slide the fingers up the shins, flat back, unshrug the shoulders, spread the heart, keep that Uddiyana Bandha, navel lift, and exhale, fold. And soften the knees and let the arms rise, rising sun coming into extended mountain, reach through right, reach through left, palms come together, draw them down the center line of the body, and once again, finding that mudra of palm over palm, honoring, nourishing your heart. Mm. Feet are hip width apart. Tailbone roots down, crown lifts to the sky. Take a big sweeping sun breath up and take a little standing back bend, heart, hands, gaze skyward. Exhale, slow, deep dive. Half lift, inhale. Exhale, fold. Hands frame the feet, soften the knees, and either hop or step back into your plank pose. And take it one more time through your connecting vinyasa sequence. Those of you who enjoy the vigorousness of chaturanga to up dog can take that, or you can do your knees, chest, chin to cobra. You can always take child whenever you need to. Coming into downward facing dog, take another breath here to find down dog as your resting pose. Mm. And I have a, 
uh, I have a wedge here, and I'm wondering maybe if you might want to use this wedge, Pat. Uh, just a little bit of support underneath there that might just give you a little bit of, uh, of grounding there. Okay. All right, so from here, right leg sweeps back behind you. Take it into three-legged dog if you like. Inhale, and exhale, step it through, low lunge. So you're going to bring your right foot between the hands, slide the left knee back, unshrug the shoulders, inner thighs toward the center. Either stay here if you're wanting a gentler practice, or lift up into your kneeling warrior. Pinky spin inward, heart is expanding open. So you want to bring the shoulder blades a little toward one another. Big breath in, reach hands to the sky. Exhale, clasp hands. We'll do a little more practice opening that heart with this yoga mudra pose. If you want to deepen it a little, you can arch back. Let the heart shine to the sky. And all the while, those inner thighs are stabilizing you in this pose. Exhale, release. Hands under the shoulders, rock the hips back. We'll come into a runner's stretch. Square the hips to the front, so you might need something underneath. Let me know uh, if any of you here need a knee pad. Um, otherwise, at home, if you need to take a blanket there or fold your mat over, you can do that for comfort for your knees. And either stay here, finding a slow pulse in your runner stretch, or you could take it into a inhale lunge, exhale fold. If you want to take it into a dynamic movement with the breath, or even make it more big and bold by sweeping up, opening the heart, arching back as if you want to touch your elbows. They're not going to touch, but try to touch your elbows behind you, looking up to spread the heart, and exhale, fold. I call this gesture opening and offering. Opening to grace. Opening to love, opening to spirit, opening to life, and exhale, making an offering. How can I serve today? <sighs> opening and offering. And coming back into that lunge, hands frame that right foot, step back to plank, and take it through your connecting vinyasa if you need a little bit more a slower paced rest, just take it back to child before coming into down dog. So we'll meet in downward facing dog. And we're going to step through with the left foot when you're ready. You can always come from table stepping through. So if you took three-legged dog on the other side, left toes rise, step it through, plant knee over ankle, slide right knee back, unshrug the shoulders, and either stay here, either on your fingertips or, as most of you know, you can always place a block under your shoulders. If you use the blocks, make sure they're right under your shoulders and not out to the side or forward. And then if you're ready, when you want to explore Anjaniasana, as a kneeling warrior pose, root down through the tail, reach up through the fingertips, big breath in. Exhale, clasp hands, play with that open heart, maybe arching back and looking up as an optional play. Exhale, release, and fold into your runner stretch. And maybe you're going to hang out here and just take a slow pulse, lengthening on the inhale, deepening on the exhale. Or maybe you'll take it into inhale lunge, exhale fold. Remember, flat back here, you want to fold from the hip crease when you take this runner stretch. You don't want to come into schlumpasana here with a rounded upper back. Or you can take it big and bold, opening and offering. Opening to power, grace, beauty, whatever you want to draw in. Exhale, thy will be done. <sighs> Flowing with breath. Keep that ujjayi breath going. Let it be a moving meditation. And then, next inhale, come back into your lunge, 
and step it back into plank and flow it through your expression of the connecting sequence. Whether that be a moment in child or chaturanga up dog, down dog. We'll meet in downward facing dog. And then we're going to take it into some standing play. Take another deep breath in and exhale to land fully in your downward facing dog. We're going to step through with the right foot. So you can take it into three-legged dog. If you want to kick your asana here, you can roll the hips open, kick butt, and then step it through into a high lunge. You're on the ball of your back foot. As the inner thighs activate toward the midline, see if you can gracefully rise up into a balancing warrior one. So here we have our first balancing practice. You're on the ball of the back foot, toes pointing straight ahead on both feet. Notice if you've gone into scrunch asana and soften through the shoulders. And again, we'll practice that opening the heart, clasping the hands behind you. Big breath. For a little more challenge, you can practice arching back. And then release. Yeah, it is a balance practice. Hands reach to the sky and float down into the lunge and we'll take it right into a twist, revolve side angle to your right. Keeping your knee stacked over your right ankle, back leg, left leg straight and activated. Exhale, release, step it back, flow it through. Either knees, chest, chin, or a moment in child, or just table and cat cow as your transition to meet in down dog. Heart melts slow. You're really going to press down and away beyond your fingertips into the earth here. Don't bear the weight in your heel of your hand, but more in your fingers and thumbs. Float the left leg up behind you. If you took a three-legged dog, it's always optional. Roll the hips open and step it through into a high lunge. Plant your foot between your hands. Unshrug your shoulders. It's okay to use blocks here if that helps. And when you're ready, rise up into your balancing warrior one. Use your drishti focus to help steady yourself. If you need to have your hands wider to soften and, re and, and unkink the shoulders a little bit, you can do that. Navel lift. Exhale, hands clasp. Inhale, open the heart. <sighs> Maybe even touching back into that mantra, aham prema, as you open the heart. Release and take it right into a revolved side angle. As you press the right hand down, lift the left hand to the sky, long and wide, big inhale. Exhale, release, step back into your plank pose and flow it through. Pace yourself. There's no shame in just taking a rest or just going into your cat cow to take a transition moment. We're going to step through with the right foot again. So you can take that three-legged dog if you'd like. You can kick butt. Or those of you who want to play a little bit more deeply can take it into wild thing, flipping your dog all the way over. I'm not going to teach that today, but if that's part of your repertoire, you can feel free to take that. Before coming into a lunge with the right foot forward. Yeah. Spin the left heel inward 45 degrees to line up heel with instep. We're going to bring the left forearm to the thigh, so we're going to take it into an extended side angle. If you feel more comfortable having a block underneath your shoulder, you can do that. You want to find that long expansion through the left side of your body. I'm not mirroring you here on the screen. Grow long, and then if it's available to you to wheel right up into your warrior two, Shoulders over hips. Take it into a dancing warrior. If it feels good for you to come into that flow, I think we did this last time, lengthening into extended side angle, coming through warrior two on the exhale, inhaling into your dancing warrior, exhaling warrior two. You can do that a few times, or you can just hang out here in this extended side angle, reaching long through your fingertips, and next time you come into this extended side angle, if you'd like to take it into a bind, you can reach that other hand, that upper hand back behind you. Roll open the torso, look up at the sky. 
and then lengthen out and pivot back into your lunge. Step back into your plank and transition how you like it to meet in down dog. We can do the other side. So we get some of those standing side opening postures. From your downward facing dog, take whatever kind of three-legged dog exploration you took. If you flipped your dog, don't forget the mantra. Woohoo! When you do that. And step through with the left foot, spinning the right heel inward. You don't have to go too fast. I'm just showing you where you're going to be. So take your time to get there. We're going to come into extended side angle. When you come into extended side angle, Utita Parshva Konasana in Sanskrit, if your stance is too short, your butt's going to be sticking up in the air and you won't have that diagonal line. Root down through the outer edge, this time of your right foot, find a long line through the body, and let that long line reach right out through your fingertips. Keep the core firm so that you can lengthen your spine and support yourself here, and then take that flow, that play, that exhales into warrior two, inhales into dancing to open through the side body. Exhales back through warrior two. Inhale, usually we inhale in the expand, expansive poses. Exhale in the ah, deepening into that powerful stance of the warrior. Inhale once again into the playful dancingness of it. Ah, exhale, warrior two. So play with that. And if your leg becomes fatigued, especially that front left bent leg, you can straighten it for a moment and land back into your warrior. So no need to strain here. You can always take a little break and a little rest. And when you're ready to take it into a bind, if that's part of your repertoire, you can bring that back hand back behind you to the hip or slip your pinky in the hip crease, grab your thigh, roll open. Big breath in, and then release long and away, and pivot back into your lunge. Step it back. We've got one more sequence to do. If you need to just come down into table or child, you can do that. If you've got energy and want to flow it through, you can do that. We'll meet in downward facing dog. We're going to take it into some balance play. So let yourself land in a good resting pose for yourself, either down dog or child or table. Find your breath. That was a vigorous um, sequence there. And we're going to step through with the right foot into your lunge. So if you want to take a three-legged dog, you can, or you can just simply step it through. And we're going to rise up once again into that balancing warrior. All right, I'm going to mirror you here as I face you. So you've got your right foot forward, balancing warrior, navel lift, tail roots down. Yeah. And then open your wings. We're going to take flight into the crane, which you can do by stepping up to mountain first and then lifting, or you can spring right off into flight, lifting your left knee to hip height. The right knee takes is uh, not bent, but unlocked. There's like a micro bend. Yeah. And soften your shoulders, soften your elbows and wrists so you've got elegant, easeful wings and fix your gaze. It's fine to be anywhere if you need to come off. It's sometimes nice to come off of the mat so you're on a firmer surface and bring your fingertip against the wall if you need that. From here, you can either dip your toe in the water if you need to as the crane dips its toe in or come into a figure four. Standing figure four, hands in prayer. You want to meet above the ankle, mid-thigh, and come into that squat. Here's our second pigeon type of stretch of the day. After the cradle the baby, now we do the standing pigeon. It's like a chair pose on one leg, externally re rotating that hip, sit down into that squat. Oh yeah. If you want to take this deeper, you can fold over the figure four legs without locking your knee. Keep it just slightly unlocked. Fold the torso nice and close. Maybe bring one hand behind the calf for full expression of the balance play, both hands behind the calf, even just for a breath or two. It's fun to play. 
And we're going to come back the way we came, right into the balancing pigeon, opening the wings, and then taking that leap of faith to land quietly on the ball of your foot, come back into your balancing warrior one. I'm going to give you an option to take a twist here. So either prayer twist, palms come together, upper left arm, outside right knee, or revolved side angle like you did before, or just lower the back knee and take a press twist. Whatever twist serves you. And then step it back to plank and flow it through. Meeting in downward facing dog. This is going to be the last of the standing poses, so we're almost done with the vigorous portion. So as you're ready, you can step through your left foot into a high, lo into a high lunge, ball of the back foot, rise up into balancing warrior one. Ujjayi breath. Open your wings. And either in two steps, going through mountain, or one springing off into flight. Take it into your crane. Gaze fixed in a spot on the floor a few feet in front of you. It's fine to have a fingertip against the wall. With the softness in the shoulders and the elbows and the wrists, softness in the muscles around the eyes and the face and the jaw and the brow, just Cultivate that sense of easefulness as you feel the wind beneath your wings. And then when you're ready, taking it into your expression of the balancing pigeon. Remember to be above your ankle and not on your ankle. Your foot wants to be past your standing leg. Externally rotate. You don't have to go as deep as I'm going. It's fine to stay standing if you're feeling like you're getting a good hip stretch there. Oh yeah, if it's available, you can fold. This is optional, everything is optional. Bringing hands behind the calf for the balance play here. Or just keeping your fingertips on the floor or on a block. Coming back into your balancing pigeon when you're done with that. <laughs> And uh, up into crane, taking that leap of faith nice and slow, landing quietly back into warrior one, balancing, and into the twist of your choice. Either prayer twist, or revolved side angle, or knee down twist, pressing into the thigh. Whatever helps you get a nice rotation of the spine while you're in that lunge. Step back into plank pose. <sighs> and lower the knees down. We're just going to take it into a rest into the child. Take a moment to settle in and feel what you've cultivated in your body physically, energetically. Feel the quality of your breath. Or make sure you're all still with me at home. <sighs> yeah. When you're ready, find your way back into table pose, and we're going to take a deep back bend of the day. We're going to do it in stages. So we'll start with the gentlest expression and then take it deeper. We're going to take it into the bow pose. I'll turn sideways so you can see the angle of my body a little bit better. First, from your table, we're going to take it into the heart melting pose or puppy stretch. So keep your thighs straight up and down, your hips over your knees. Walk the hands as far forward as they'll go. Melt the heart down. You can start with just the forehead down. Navel lift in and up. So this is just like a down dog in the upper body. 
except you're on your knees with bent knees. Reaching your hips back, reaching your hands forward, letting the heart melt down as the pose suggests. Heart melting or puppy stretch. Now if you want to take this deeper, you can bring the chin down instead. And the other option is you can come up onto fingertips, pressing your tips of your fingers straight down, which lifts the hands, the palms, the wrists, the arms, and allows you to draw your shoulder blades toward one another to give you that release in the rhomboid area. All the while, keep the navel drawing in and up just a little bit to support your lengthening spine. And then you can lower the palms down and the elbows and forearms and draw the body forward into your sphinx. Make sure that you line up your elbows right underneath your shoulders, po parallel forearms, palms wide. And when you come into the sphinx, you're going to reach the toes back, press all 10 toes down, tops of the feet pressed down, and press them down enough so that you're really energizing through the legs. You feel the kneecaps lift, you feel your quads activate. Press the pubic bone down, and press the elbows down and draw them toward the ribs without actually moving them. It's an isometric pull, which will uh, activate and lengthen through the front of the body front of the torso, shoulders draw back, heart draws forward, crown lifts, without kinking the neck back. Ah. Now if you want to play with this, you can press into the hands and straighten the elbows. So this might be your exploration today, either lifting and lowering or just hanging out in Sphinx. It might be your exploration to bend the knees and touch the big toes, drawing the heels close to the low back as you play with that. So you've got that mashup of Sphinx and Seal. And it's a nice front body expansion. You can feel the solar plexus expand and open. And if you want to take this to the next level of play, optional, if it's available to your body, you can take it into bow by rolling the torso down, letting the forehead come down, hands reach alongside the body. Bend the knees, inner thighs come toward one another, grab the tops of the feet just below the toes, inhale, lift the knees, thighs, lift the head and chest. You're balancing right on your belly and pelvis. Ah, chest is lifted, kick up, kick back up and back, Buddha smile, let the edges of the mouth lift. Just two or three breaths is all you need. See if you can lift the thighs off of the mat. That's a little tricky there. And then lower down and make a pillow with the hands. Turn the cheek to one side, let everything go. <sighs> Just let the body, but just feel that when we do a deep pose like that and you just come into a moment of rest afterwards, you can actually feel the echo or the reverberation of that pose in your, on a cellular level, on a molecular level. You can feel the tingling and pulsing and warmth of prana. If you want to just rock the hips side to side a little bit, to, unkink through the low back. And we're going to give you a, an, a, a, another way to explore in this back bend. So you can either come back through into your sphinx and a way to access the sphinx pose, you can do it with a rolled up blanket or you can do it with a bolster. If you have a bolster, I'll just show you with the rolled up blanket because not everybody necessarily has a bolster. If I take my blanket and I roll it up, and I have bolsters for those of you here if you want them, making a jelly roll, and I'm going to place it underneath the lower ribs right around the solar plexus area with my arms in front, so I'm still in the sphinx arms. So I've got a little bit of support there under the lower ribs, right in that solar plexus spot. And that way, if I want to try to reach back, I still have the support for the lift. Might still be a challenge to get the knees or, or the thighs off, but at least you can ex explore that bow back bend and reach for your back feet. So you can explore that. Susan, I want to give you, I want you to use, use, use this bolster. 
Try that. That's going to be a little bit higher. Try and see how that feels. So explore with your bow pose. So those of you who need the bolster support can take a moment to play with that. Those of you who want to take your bow a little deeper, if it's available to you, if you found that was easy peasy, grab below the ankles and flex the feet so the soles of the feet face the sky. And then explore that lift. See how that feels. For two or three deep breaths, ujjayi, before coming down, slowly lowering, and bringing other palm on top, turning the cheek to the other side. It's fine just to hang out in Sphinx or come into rest if you like. If you're coming into a rest with your belly down, Try windshield wipering the lower leg side to side, just to release and unkink through the low back. <sighs> mm. And then float the feet down. Slide the hands under the shoulders. Press up nice and slow onto your hands and knees and take a nice deep cat stretch and really milk that and breathe into it, maybe coming up onto fingertips. So we get the opposite stretch of what we did in the back bends. And now we get the forward flexion of the spine and any other movements that feel good to reset. All right. From here, we're going to take uh, one of my favorite winding down twists, which gives you also a little fun way to play with balance and stability, which is the thread the needle sequence. The simplest version of thread the needle, and I'll face you here so you can, well, actually, I'll face this way because it'll be easier to see the angle of my body. <sighs> From your table pose, I'm going to start by lifting the right hand to the sky. So you're taking a, uh, a spinal twist here from your hands and knees, keeping your hips over your knees, thighs straight up and down. Keep your left hand where it is and exhale, thread the needle through, lowering your right shoulder underneath your left. Reach your right fingertips as far over to the left as you can. You're just gonna keep your left palm where it is and bend the elbow so it comes to 90 degrees. Now press your shoulder into the mat. Press your left palm into the mat and try to find a little more rotation. So you're rolling that left shoulder back and open. Now you can either stay here with the side of the head on the mat and just as an aside, if your head doesn't want to come all the way down, you can always take a blanket, a little blanket fold underneath. So like this. Pat, you might find that uh, useful just to have a little bit of height. You can take it into a bind. Let's give you this, this much height. See if that makes it a little more available to you. You can take it into a bind, releasing your left hand, reach it up to the sky and back behind you, either back of the hand to the hip, or slip your pinky in the hip crease, grab your right thigh, walk your fingers to the inner thigh, and roll the shoulder open. Uh, so you bring the twist a little bit, a little bit juicier twist in the upper back. You can either stay here, if you want to play a little more, you're going to take your left foot and slide it back. So you're going to just be on the right knee, lift the left hip, curl your toes under and press back through the left heel. So now you can roll open through the lower back a little bit more as you try to stack your left hip on top of your right. So that's a stability practice. Now, you may want to curl your right toes under here just for balance. For a little bit extra fun, see if you can float that left, those left toes up to the sky, long line, so long line through that left leg. Ah, uh, <laughs> yep, if you fall over, just have a sense of humor. Point your toes, <laughs> lift it high, long diagonal from your lower shoulder to your toes on that lifted leg, and then slowly unwind back onto your knees, unwind your bind, come back to table. All right? So don't worry if you don't feel ready to do all those steps. Just the first step is a wonderful twist. So now we're going to lift the left hand 
Open up, stack left shoulder on top of right. Exhale, thread it through, bring the left shoulder down, the si left side of the head down. Your right elbow comes to 90 degrees as you press into the palm to get a little bit more spinal rotation there. You can also feel that stretch behind the shoulder blade on the left side. Either stay here, keeping your knees over your, excuse me, keeping your hips over your knees, thighs straight up and down. See if you can release the right hand to come into your expression of the bind. Rolling the shoulder open. <sighs> deepening that spinal rotation. You can either stay here for a few more breaths or straighten the right leg, slide the right foot back, lift the right hip. Press out through the heel, back of the knee crease lifts, maybe curling left toes under just to stabilize you before lifting those toes to the sky if you're going to take that final fun. <laughs> People are always dropping like flies on this one. Lift, lengthen, point those toes, and when you're ready to release, come back step by step the way you came back into your table and find any wiggles and waggles that feel good here. <laughs> mm. All right. I'm going to invite you to come onto your back, and I'm going to give you a yogi's choice time for an inversion. Any upside-down pose that feels good for you. If you have a headstand as part of your practice, you can take that. Otherwise, if you want to do a little more yin practice and bring, come into legs up the wall, some of you look like you're ready to do that, you can do that. And you can hang out there for the remainder of our, pract of our physical practice. Or you can take your shoulder stand and plow. One of the things you can do if you're in the legs up the wall, before you get set up, Susan, into that, I want to um, give you a... And I hope you don't mind if I use you as an example here. Um, I'm going to use Susan as an example of, um, let's see, uh, she's got her legs up the wall on Hanuman. He doesn't mind. No, that's good. You can either stay here with, this is a wonderful, simple inversion, and I will put the sandbag bag on in a moment, but you can also use this as a way to access the shoulder stand or a modified shoulder stand. If you press your feet into the wall, just uh, bend the knees, press your feet into the wall. Now bring your hands underneath to support you yeah, on either side of the low back. Walk your elbows as close in as you can. All right, yeah, that's okay. So you can, and slide your feet down just a little bit, yeah. So this is a modified shoulder stand, so she's got some support with her feet in the, against the wall. So she's not bearing all of her weight on her shoulders, but she can get that uh, working toward it. And then if you want, you can work on one leg and then on, at a time or then the other to come into your shoulder stand, if you prefer, if you, only if it feels good for you. So you can feel free to take that pat if you'd like or just hang out in your... Um, in, in your, yeah, in your um, legs up the wall. Yeah, only if it doesn't feel right today, just, just keep the simpler, simpler challenge. So take your moment of inversion. All of you have some way that you will enjoy. It might just be placing a block under your sacrum and letting the legs go up in the air. That's fine. Mm. Oh, sorry, I didn't get your... Let's get this even. Yeah. Yeah. Would you like a sandbag on your feet? Oh, uh, I've never tried that. I'll tr well, let's try it and see how you... It, what it does, what the sandbag does, is it kind of anchors the uh, head of the femur bone into the hip a little bit more and just gives this sense of feeling snug. Thank you. Yeah. The other thing that can feel nice as a, a snug feeling is a little bit of a pillow. A pillow or some just little bit of weight on the belly. This is not as heavy as the sandbag. It's just a little 
Does that feel okay? It just gives that sense of being swaddled. Now, those of you who are in Legs Up the Wall, because that's a lovely restorative pose, I'm going to give you the choice, if you'd like, to just stay there for the remainder of our physical practice, rather than going into Shavasana. It's absolutely fine to do Legs Up the Wall as an alternative. And um, if you want to transition into Shavasana, those of you at home want to do that, you can take a moment now to bring yourself to a wind down place where you can come into Shavasana. Do you want to stay in legs up the wall in like a, a sandbag or would you like to come into Shavasana? I'm not sure. I've dropped my legs and this felt really nice. All right. <laughs> yeah, just, just let it, you know, just do what feels. So those of you at home, I'm just going to invite you to transition into a moment of rest on your back or with your legs up the wall, a moment of integration, any kind of yin or restorative pose. Another option is the supine bound angle, which brings the soles of the feet together and the legs open like a diamond hands at your side, or maybe hands on the belly, one hand on the belly, one hand on the heart. And as we're in this restorative moment, once again, I'm going to invite you to touch into that place in the center of your chest. The Hridayam. the great spiritual traditions of the world and all of the great wisdom of the mystics from those different traditions and their scriptures all teach us that love is the substratum of the universe. The ground of existence is love. It is said, God is love. And our consciousness is continually moving in and out of remembering and forgetting this truth. Our lives are a dance of glimpses of knowing this and of falling back into the forgetting. That's the human condition. Love is the primordial unity that is present before the mind divides all experience into subject and object. Love is the essential oneness that is prior to duality. Love is the awakening into the knowing that there is no such thing as other. Love is the essential nature of the self. It is what is true before the human mind gets lost in the forgetting. Aham Prema is a mantra that calls us back into the remembering of our true nature, which is love. 
अहम प्रेमा 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 अहम Slowly begin to deepen your breath and invite some movement into the fingers and toes. And if you're in legs up the wall, or even if you're on your back, just hug your knees in toward your chest and roll over onto one side. Take your time. invite you to find your way into a seated position for some pranayama and meditation. So if anyone here who's uh, here in the studio with me needs a meditation cushion, would you like a zafu? Okay, whatever, whatever can support you in having your hips a little higher than your knees. If you need something to support your outside of your knee, one or both knees, you can do that. Um, a block might be a little high. If you need a block, you can use it. Otherwise, you can take your sandbag and place it there if you, if you need. Long spine, shoulders back and down. Let the eyes close. Just feel the reverberation of this sequence of postures that we explored this morning. Feel how it echoes within. I invite you to touch into your three-part breaths. Letting the breath move from bottom to top as the belly expands, ribs widen, and chest lifts. Letting the breath surround the heart, and then exhaling from top to bottom, emptying chest, ribs, and belly.
dirga ujjayi pranayam, a little bit of ujjayi sound. Today we'll just work with the ujjayi on the exhale. I'm going to touch back into the spinal breathing that we did last time, where we open the throat on the inhale as we lift the breath up into the chest. And we find that little contraction in the glottis, a little activation that contracts the airway just slightly so the breath makes a whisper sound on the exhale. As you empty the breath back out from top to bottom. Open throat on the inhale. Exhale. Ujjayi. And layering on the visualization of the spinal breathing. On the inhale, energy draws up from the root, the perineum area, the bottom of the spine area, to the point between the eyebrows, the third eye, the Ajna Chakra, center of higher wisdom and intuition. On the exhale, Visualize a current of energy drawing down from the third eye, down to the perineum or the root chakra point, which is your grounding, your stability. Up the spine on the inhale, taking a little turn in the center of the head makes a little 90 degree turn as it comes up through the shashamna, the central subtle nerve, turns in the center of the head, goes out the third eye and then comes back in on the exhale, making that turn in the center of the head and drawing down to the root. The end of your exhale, that current of energy touches down at the root. What we are doing is opening and purifying that central channel to cultivate greater ecstatic conductivity from root to third eye. simply a visualization that we sync up with the breath. Energy rises up to third eye point on the inhale and exhale, rides back down that channel to the root. You can stay with this simple visualization of that current rising and going back down with your breath. And if you like, you can layer on the next level of the visualization, which is a rising up of the energy being cool and light, like a white light rising up. And as the throat is open, perhaps you feel that coolness of the current rising up to the third eye. And on the exhale, as you contract the glottis just a little bit with the ujjayi, 
which warms the air. Feel a warm current coming down back to the root. And that warm current you can visualize as a darker hue. I like to visualize it as kind of like a, an amber honey moving down the spine to the root. White, cool energy coming up to the third eye. Darker, warm energy moving down. If that feels too complicated, just stay with the simplest visualization. Just a subtle sense of energy moving up and down with your breath. Releasing now the spinal breathing pranayama. And just take a moment to notice the reverberation of that practice. And for our final practice this morning as our meditation, I would like to invite you to, once again, focus on that mantra, Aham Prema. Our first uh, class in this series, we worked on just allowing the breath to be our focus of meditation, simplest kind of meditation. And last class, we've layered on a mantra, Soham, which means I am that. Today, we're working with the mantra, Aham Prema, and what I'd like to do is to introduce you to japa practice, which is a type of meditation that means repetition. Repetition of a mantra 108 times. And we use the mala. It doesn't take as long as you think. We use the mala, which is, has 108 beads. And so I will keep count. 108 is considered a sacred number in, the, um, in many Eastern traditions. And so that's the number that we use for repetitions of the mantra. And simply bring your attention to the sound of the mantra. Again and again, if the mind wanders, just bring it back to the sound of the mantra. Aham prema, I am divine love. You're gonna just find a long and lifted meditation seat. You can have your hands either open on your lap or you can even have your hands on your heart if you wanna connect with that quality of the heart that this mantra cultivates. Aham prema. I'm going to give you a little rhythm that we're going to use. I'm going to count the 108, so all you need to do is follow me. And anytime you notice thoughts coming in or distraction, just return to the mantra. Aham prema. 108 times. And what happens is when we repeat a mantra, when we repeat a mantra like this, it has a vibrational, these ancient Sanskrit mantras have a vibrational effect on us at a, a cellular level, at a molecular level. So you don't need to understand it. 
or be um, uh, mentally thinking about it. Just focus on just the sound and the feeling of the sound vibrating in your body. Aham Prema. The rhythm will keep us together since we're not all using malas. So it'll be um, Aham Prema. Aham. That will be the rhythm. So, all right. Take a deep breath in. Release. Saying out loud. Aham Prema. 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 Feel the hum. Aham Prema. Aham. Feel the vibration of it. Aham Prema. Aham. Just the lips move. Silently repeating. Just lips moving. speaking. Ah. Uh -huh. 
chest is feeling that echo internally that affirmation I am divine love Aham Prema notice what's alive in you I invite you to take this practice out into your day. Whenever you notice yourself falling into the forgetting of who you truly are, allow this mantra to be a tool to bring you back into the awareness that you are much greater than your egoic mind, much bigger than who you think you are. You are the love that is the substratum of the universe. It is breathing and moving and having its being through you. Hands in prayer, palms joining palm, palm joins palm. Take a deep breath in, let's close our practice with the sound of Om. Stay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So sweet to practice with you.